What is up guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create this wind simulation effect in Chloe 3D and bring it into Blender. If you want to skip some steps and go straight to the final product and just add your design to it, uh, this mockup will be available for $10 on my store. Uh, but this is just how to create it from scratch. So the first thing you want to do is find an OBJ or Blender file of a hanger. There is a free one available on my store. So once you have that and have it imported into Blender, you want to make sure you've selected it and then go file export obj and then you'll have your obj file from there we can go into clo 3d i'm going to be using one of my um, 3d mockups these are also you can do it with all of mine so if you want to use those you can uh, so from there we're just going to make sure we click on the avatar and delete it and then we're going to go file import obj and we're going to import the hanger that we exported from blender make sure it's added and then click ok so from here we can just select the hang and bring it up and we're just going to reposition it like somewhat in the middle and then go normal simulate and you should see that it's hanging on the hanger now uh, from here you can see like the material is quite um, droopy so to fix that we're going to change the fabric type i'm just going to apply one of these fabrics to all of them and then i'm also just going to delete this ribbing um, from here once you've selected this main fabric we can go down to physical properties and i'm going to select cotton terry cloth uh, you can do whatever you want and whatever you feel looks best but i just found like this worked the best for the shirt once we're happy with how the shirt is hanging we're now going to start simulating the wind effect so we can go up to this little environment display and hit show wind controller this is going to pop this little guy up and from here we can now start playing with our property editor so make sure you have activated wind um, and you can just go into our simulator and make sure it's running and we can start to see that there's some like wind movements going around this is really just preference but i found that when you set the strength to about 75 and then your frequency to 100 you got a pretty good result so how it works is your frequency is how often it will recycle the the wind strength um, your turbulence is as it is um, and your decay is also it's not too relevant um, but you can just go around and fiddle around with those also found that setting it to um, pla planner or whatever i don't know how to pronounce that it works the best because spherical obviously like rotates around you know tornado type movements and then your whatever this is is just straight on um, so from there you can just adjust it um, to see where you how you want the wind to blow um, I found that this kind of worked the best for what I was looking for and then once you're happy with that you can press shift a and hide the hanger because you're going to be importing it back into blender once that is done we can go up to our animator and make sure animation stable is selected I normally do around five six depending on how I feel and you can just start press record and it'll start recording the simulation of the wind movement now i kind of ran with about 2000 frames and then picked the best section from those 2000 frames uh, so just run it out depends on what your pc specs are it might take longer uh, it might not once you've rendered out a couple frames just do a preview and see where it works best and set your start frame and end frame from there um, before exporting it as a limbic file once you've rendered up enough frames, you can now change your number here at the bottom just so you can see the timeline better um, and then play it through and just see where like the wind kind of blows the best, I guess, and then select it from there. Off the bat, this looks really cool. I'm pretty happy with this, so I'm probably going to render out this whole thing. So from here, we can now go up to the top left, press File, Export, Alembic, make sure it's a Gawa, and then choose your destination. So mine's just going to be Desktop. We can call this wind sim t-shirt um, and then we can go unwild thick keep everything as is and hit ok and it will start exporting the limbic file once that has finished exporting we can now go into blender in blender just to show you kind of how i worked with it i had my hanger set up in the place that i wanted before i did the animation in clo so we can just hide this t-shirt and re-import the new one we're going to re-import alembic and let's just import this back in um, and you'll see that it's blank so now we just need to align this with um, our hanger can rotate this press r 
put it by Z and just rotate this on the Z axis. And we're just gonna reposition this until we're happy with how it sits. So that's almost perfect. So once we're happy with that, you can see now that uh, when we do a little playthrough, you can see that it's moving around. Pretty cool. To update the graphic on the T, we're gonna go back to Clo and go to our UV editor and we're gonna export this UV. So let's go up to the top here, bake textures, and let's set the path to our desktop. You can call this wind sim T and hit save and hit okay. We can then take this a UV that we've exported and open it with Photoshop and we can drag and drop any graphics that we want onto the T. So I just found this NARC graphic uh, that I really liked and kind of just copied and pasted it, deleted the background and then used the color picker tool in Photoshop to create a, a rectangle shape, brought it above layer one, right clicked and say create clipping mask. And then just like that, we have our graphic. Uh, so let's put this on the front. So you'll notice that there is a little bit of a color difference here. We can just set this to pin light and we should get a better effect. Then we can go file, save as. We're going to save this as a Photoshop file on our desktop. Hit OK. And then go back into Blender. Open up the shader tab. Go to shader editor. And let's go to materials. We're going to make a new material. Drag and drop that Photoshop file into Blender. Just like so and then connect the color to color and it should automatically be updated now you'll notice that we don't have any textures on our shirt so i'm going to be using vmod check that out if you want to see how to set up textures for clothing i have a tutorial on my channel you can check that out um, so we're going to press Control shift t and i'm just going to select the textures that are that i thought work best we don't need this alpha map or the ao map or the base map we can just click principal texture and then just like that we'll you'll see that there are some textures but it's oversized so we're going to press shift a followed by value um, and then we're going to align this with our scale and then i normally set it around 25 and you'll notice that there's some texturing going on here it's not too noticeable but that's because we have like some depth of field going um, on our camera so yeah that's just to add some more realistic stuff to it I'll explain the rest of the scene now. Uh, so for the light, um, I just added a sunlight, set it to about 10. Uh, you can probably bring it down a little bit, but because I wanted that bloom in K cycles, uh, I thought it would work best like that. These trees I got with um, PagPa. Uh, it's a pretty cool plugin. I'll link that below. Um, and then for the animation of the leaves. So I only did the animation of the leaves on this front uh, tree. Uh, you'll notice that they like slightly move uh, when I run through it like this. Uh, so to do that, it's really, really simple. I'll show you how to do it on this back tree here. So the first thing you want to do is create an empty. Press Shift A, empty, and drag and drop. And then scale it around the tree area. Then uh, for the leaves themselves, we want to go into our edit mode. And then click on this top one and say select. And it should select all the leaves uh, just because there's two separate material or three separate materials so once you've selected all the leaves we can right click and say separate selection this will separate the leaves from the rest of the tree which is what we need we're then going to add a displacement modifier so let's go to our modify tab go add and hit displacement it'll look weird at first uh, but let's create a new texture i already have one set up so let's create a new texture uh, and then from there, we can just go down to our texture properties and make sure that it's set to clouds. Then we can go back here, set it to object, and we're going to select the empty that we created. Uh, so you'll see off the bat that nothing is, is happening. This is because our empty isn't rotating. So we can set up a few keyframes. I did about 10 degrees uh, over 300 frames. Uh, so let's set this first frame here. Press R followed by Z and hit zero. And then we can go to like 550 R followed by Z and then hit 10. And now and what you'll see is there's like some slight movements between the two. And also what you want to do is just right click and make sure you set interpolation mode to linear. And just so there's a more consistent movement throughout uh, the timeline. 
Um, and then also for the background, I said I went to my shader view and went to world. I just made a scar texture like so. Make sure the altitude is up. You can't really see the background too much. You can kind of see it through there a little bit. Make sure that's all set up and then you should be good to go. Like I said, if you want to use this exact markup, it will be available on my store. Otherwise, you can create it from scratch. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Please make sure to drop a like, comment, and sub. If you do need any help, make sure to join the Discord. I'm always keen to help you guys. Like always, have a good one, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.